In this video, we'll be taking a look at the very cool track controls options here in GarageBand, where you can control your track settings, your volume, your panning, your mute and solo, your plugins and EQ, and your effects all in one place. So let's go. Hi, my name is Pete and this is Studio Live Today, where my goal is to help you create, record and release your best music. And if you use GarageBand here on your iPhone or your iPad like I do, then the Track Controls panel is pretty much your one-stop shop for everything that you need to control your sound. So let's dive in and take you through how to get there and then what options you have available in Track Controls. To access our track controls, we simply tap on whichever track we want to change and then tap on this mixer icon here in the top left. Now that's if you're on a larger iPhone or an iPad. If you're on a smaller iPhone, it's gonna be up here in the top right corner and you're seeing a video on your screen right now showing you how to access if you're on a smaller iPhone. Now, once we're here in our track controls panel, there's a bunch of things we can do. So let's go through each of those now. We've got our track settings here at the top where we can control some of our recording options. We'll show you that in more detail shortly. We've then got our output panel here where we can control track volume, track panning, as well as mute and solo functions on the track. Heading down further, our plugins and EQ section. So we've got some basic controls here on the front screen, or we can tap through to have complete control and add in and remove different plugins as well as access our visual EQ there and finally last but not least at the bottom are our master effects so this is where we can add master echo and master reverb and tap through to actually change what types of echo and reverb we're applying to our track so that's the basics let's dive in and go through each one of these in a little more detail so let's take a closer look at the track settings option. Now I've got an audio recorder track selected here. So if you're recording a microphone or a guitar or any external sound source and we tap on track settings, we're not gonna get a whole lot of options. All we've really got here is multi-take recording. So if we wanna turn multi-take on, we tap that one. Now multi-take is on. If you wanna turn it off again, we tap it again. If you wanna learn more about multi-take recording, there's a video linked down in the description. So let's now jump out of that one and jump into a different type of track. We'll tap on this keyboard track, which is a virtual instrument track. And if we tap on track settings now, you can see we've got a bunch more options here. We've still got multi-take recording, we can turn on and off. We've also got the merge recordings function, which we can turn on. And that means we can record multiple takes and it will actually combine all of the different takes together in one recording, in one track. So. We can turn that one on and off there. We've also got the transposition function here. So we can transpose up and down a number of octaves and a number of semitones. Again, you wanna learn about transposition of MIDI. You can learn about that in the video in the description as well. And finally, we've got quantization, which helps us line up our track. It basically snaps your track to the grid to make sure that it's in time with the rest of your song. So if you wanna learn more about quantization, once again, check out the video up the top there right now and down in the description. Let's now take a look at the output panel because this one is super important. I've got my piano track selected here now and you can see I can adjust volume, panning, mute and solo. So let's show you how all these function now. If I hit play on this track, it's going to play the whole track at the moment. So what I can do is I can adjust the volume of this particular track as well as the panning and I can even mute and solo it. So if I mute out the piano, it'll play all the tracks except for that piano. And on the other side, if I solo this, it's gonna play only the piano sound. So let's hit play. So we've got easy access to our mute and solo. They are also, if we drag out this panel, they're also corresponding here. So if we adjust these here, they're gonna adjust over on our output panel as well. So that is one option we have there. The other thing that we have here, if we solo this piano again, we can adjust the volume. So if we hit play, we can turn the volume up and down. And we can also adjust the panning, so we can adjust it from all the way to the left, to all the way to the right, and anywhere in between that we like it. So we can actually set our panning and our volume as well as mute and solo right here in the output panel. So they are really useful functions that you're going to use in your mixing on almost every track. 
Let's continue on now and take a look at the next section, which is our plugins and EQ panel here. Now, this is another really important one because we have control over our compressor, just a single dial that we can dial in there. We've also got some basic EQ controls here, so we can control the treble and the bass right here on the front screen. But where the power of this panel actually is, is when we tap on the arrow here to go into this section, because here we can actually completely control all of our plugins and EQ settings. So let's give you a quick look at what we can do here now. So in this section, we can tap on the lights here to turn different plugins and EQ on and off. Blue light means they're on and not on means they're not on. So if we want to adjust this compressor, then we can actually tap on the arrow here and the drop down will give us complete control over threshold, ratio, attack, gain, and how much of that compression we want to mix in. And if you want to learn all about compression as well as using plugins and EQ in general in GarageBand, there's a video up the top at the end of this video and down in the description that will get you up and running. Running. The other cool thing we can do is tap on the edit button here and we can add in new plugins and effects here. So if we tap one of these green plus buttons, we can add any of the built-in garage band effects and any of our audio unit extensions. Now I don't have any installed on this particular phone, but you can install third-party apps, third-party plugins, and even Apple's own free plugins that you can download and install for free. And there's another video linked down in the description showing you all about that. So we'll hit uh, on done for now because we don't want to add anything in there. We can also remove. So if we do add in a plugin, so we want the bit crusher on here, and then we want to tap edit here and we want to remove it, we can just tap the red button and hit delete to remove that plugin. We can also reorder our plugins. So that's something that not a lot of folks play around with much, but we can change the order of our plugins here on this screen as well. Once we're all done with our plugins and EQ, we tap on the button here to go back and we're all done. And you'll notice that your compressor changes as well as your EQ changes are reflected on this front screen as well. So there you go, the plugins and EQs panel, one of the most important places to go to get your mix sounding its best. One final thing about plugins and EQ, different instruments will have different numbers that we can actually add. So here in a virtual instrument, if we tap edit, we can add up to four here. However, if we're using something like a virtual amp sim, we only have one additional slot. So you can merge your tracks, which is another function, which I'll have a video down in the description and then move them over to another track if you wanna add more plugins. So there are options and ways to do that. But I just wanted to point that out in case you're wondering why there's a difference between the different instruments and how many plugins you can add. Last but not least, our master effects. And these are pretty underrated, but they're actually one of my favorite things because we can dial in some echo and reverb here across all of our different tracks. And this can be really good for our final mix and even our master to get the sound that we want. Now, we can dial in the amount that we want here just by adjusting these sliders, but we can also tap on the master effects here because we can choose what type of echo. And we've got a bunch of different echoes to choose from there. And we can just select those. And then if we tap down on reverb, we can select the type of reverb that we want. And this will apply that same master effect across all of our different tracks. So we can dial in a different amount of master effects, master echo, master reverb to our different tracks. So you'll notice here the bass, I have none because I don't want any on my bass, but for my piano and my guitars, I'm dialing in different amounts on each one. Now, one more tip with this one, if you want a different type of reverb or echo on a particular track, you can still do it. So if you wanted to do that, let's say we grab this piano, we can tap on the plugins and EQ here, hit edit, and then hit the plus as we did in the previous example. And what you'll notice if you scroll down, we have two things here called track echo and track reverb. And if we add one of these in here now, we can get complete control of the reverb and this will be applied to just this track. So if you're getting frustrated that you want say a quarter note delay on your piano, but you want an eighth note delay on your guitar, this is a way you can do it. Come in and add your track reverb reverb or your track echo and you're going to get complete control over that effect. And that is going to do it for this one. How cool is the track controls panel here in GarageBand? Once again, there's two more videos linked down below that can help you learn a heap more about using the plugins, the effects and the EQ here in GarageBand to get your mixes sounding their best. Subscribe to the channel by clicking or tapping on the Studio Live Today icon for even more audio goodness and I'll see you on the next one.